Do you want to know what I think is the biggest thing that separates an amateur production from a professional production? It's not the mixing, it's not the plugins that they use, it's not the techniques that they use. A lot of the time, it's simply just sound selection. I hear bad sound selection that absolutely ruins good ideas, songs that are good as a song or good as an arrangement, but they just have the wrong sounds for that production at hand. And then I see really, really easy, simple songs that have amazing sound selection and it just works. So in this video today, I want to show you how to actually pay attention to the sounds that you're Picking, whether that's drum samples, synth presets, whether you're tracking something, and just show you things to pay attention to when you're doing your sound selection. And I want to show you some examples of how big of a detriment that can play in your final production when we have bad sounds versus really, really good sounds. So we're going to take a look at all of that in Cubase in one minute. But before we do, my name's Austin. You're watching Make Pop Music, where we have weekly videos about music and music production. If you like this video, at the end of the video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe because that helps us out a ton. And then after the video, if you want to support the channel or check out any anything else that we do, you can head over to makepopmusic.com where you can check out all of our free content. And we have sample packs, preset packs, courses, a podcast, all kinds of cool stuff over there. So after the video, like, comment, and subscribe, head over to our website. But before you do that, let's actually hop into Cubase so I can show you how to select some really, really good sounds and how detrimental having really, really bad sounds can be in your production. Let's check it. The first thing that I think you should keep in mind when you're picking your sounds for your production at hand is obviously what is the vibe of your record. So if you're doing like an indie pop, track? Are you going to want electronic drums? Are you going to want acoustic drums? Are you going to want vintage sounding synths? Are you going to want really modern sounding synths? Are you going to have clean guitar or acoustic guitar? These are things that you should have in mind really, really, really early in the production process, because if you're waiting to kind of have these things in mind, a lot of the time later down the line, your production is just going to be a little bit scrambled and you're not going to have a clear vision. So for what we're going to be working on today, this is going to be kind of an indie pop track. I'm going to show you how different it can sound once we have bad sound selection versus good sound selection and how that can kind of start to skew the genre, even if you have, you know, quote unquote, good sounds, but they might not fit the actual style at hand. So for this vibe, we want something that is kind of retro sounding, but still kind of open. We want electronic drum samples. And I want something that kind of feels like it could fit on like an indie alternative pop playlist on Spotify. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at what happens if we select bad sounds. So everything that you can see in the red right here is the quote unquote bad sound. And that doesn't mean that they're bad as a sound themselves. It just means that it's bad for the production at hand. So let's just focus on the drums for now for the bad sounds. I have picked a kick and a snare that are both from you know, vintage drum sample packs, but they don't have any extra processing on them. They don't have any extra kind of finesse on them. And to me, they just sound really, really thin and awkward. So here's the kick and the snare that we're gonna use for the bad sounds. So this kick, I don't think is gonna work. It has no really like clicky transient. And once we start adding stuff in a dense mix, it's gonna get lost immediately. It doesn't really have the punch that we need. And then this snare is just a really awkward, dry, almost acoustic sounding snare. And it doesn't really have a lot of punch. It doesn't really have a lot of depth and character. And it just sounds a little bit kind of generic. It sounds like something if you got one of those Casio keyboards and you hit the snare drum, that's what you would get. And then we're just gonna layer up a generic clap this clap is not really gonna fit this production either. It's kind of got this like really scooped, almost like loose sound. Once we layer it with a kick in the snare, you can easily hear how you know cheap these sounds sound once they're put together. So that's what happens if you're just kind of taking sounds as you find them. And that snare could work really, really well in something like a kind of acoustic mix where you put some gated reverb and some saturation and stuff like that on it. But in the song at hand that we're gonna be working on and with a style that we've kind of set, it's not really working at all. Let's take a look at these synths that we're gonna call the bad synth. It's just a patch that I made in Serum, which I use for almost all of my synths all the time. Serum is an amazing plugin, but this is a good example of how a patch can be really, really basic, but that also means that it kind of lacks depth and just feels a little bit plasticky and cheap. We have no post-processing going on with this patch at all. All this is is a saw wave that we just have some unison detune on and a cutoff filter. Sounds a little bit like this. 
And you might think that sounds pretty good. That's a pretty good bass. And I would say you're right. That is a pretty good bass. But you'll see in one second when we compare that to the good synth, how much depth it kind of lacks. And so when we layer that with the drums, we have this. The sounds don't really fit together. We have these like kind of acoustic sounding drums and this really dry sounding synth that is just not really working. Everything feels really dry, it feels really stale, and it feels really kind of cookie cutter like you just pulled in the first patch. We can also take a look at some guitar. This is live track guitar, but we've just kind of put a really generic clean tone on this. There's no wetness, there's no like chorus, there's no depth, there's no flavor, and all of these kind of cookie cutter generic sounds put together create this arrangement that feels really basic, it feels really demo-y, and it doesn't really have that depth that you would expect in a professional production. So here is like a, a little four bar loop of this bad production, so you can kind of hear this. So the actual production at hand is kind of cool. We have a cool idea. I like the chords that are going on with the synth stabs. I like the movement of the drums, but let's go ahead and let's shift over here to where we have some of the better sound selection choices. I'll explain why the sounds might work better for this production, and then I'll show you how they all fit together to create a cohesive vibe opposed to you know what we had before, which kind of felt scatterbrained and like we just dragged in the first sound. Let's focus on the kick. When I'm picking a kick for this style at hand, I want something that's got a lot of low end. I want something that's got some clicky top end so it can cut through really dense mixes and you know bass and guitar and vocals. I don't want something that's so kind of round and basic like the kick that we had before. So for this, we are just using, I believe it's an Oliver kick off of Splice. Super punchy, pretty mix ready. There's not much we need to do to it. Let's take a listen. And you can hear immediately how that sound versus this sound might give us a better foundation for the genre and for the style that we have at hand. Let's take a look at the snare. For the snare, I picked a snare called Vintage Snare 9 from our pack Disco Pop. Um, it's a pretty kind of clippy, saturated, dry, punchy snare. Works really well for like disco, indie pop, electronic pop. And it sounds a little bit something like this. You can hear that it's got a lot of punch, but since it's kind of clipped and it's kind of a bigger sounding snare, we also have a bit of tail. It's not just, you know, a super, super hard transient that dies out immediately, and we don't really have to have drum room kind of baked into that sound. I wanted something still dry and still punchy, but I needed something that, you know, would look a little bit more like a block instead of just this really transient kind of pokey snare. So here are the bad drums versus the good drums for kick and snare. versus this. And you can hear how much more punch and how much more intensity these have. I haven't really done any post-processing or mixing to anything, but just picking the right sounds out of the gate gets a lot more of my kind of nitty gritty work done. I also layered in an extra clap loop instead of just using a really kind of poor clap one shot. It's got a little bit of room baked in. And so when we listen to all these drums now, it makes a lot more sense for that kind of indie alternative pop genre that we were talking about before. Let's take a look at the synth so I can show you what the main difference is between having a poor sounding main synth versus something that I feel like works for this production. We're gonna kind of open Serum right here. It is almost the same patch, we just have a few tweaks. And this is one thing that I feel like can add a little bit of texture to your synths is we have that same A oscillator, the same envelope, the same cutoff, but what we've done is we've also added a B oscillator that is the same kind of saw wave. Again, unison at five, detune kind of the same, but we've dragged this down an octave. And where this sound really comes out to play is we have a, quite a bit of post-processing. So we have some hyper, we have some flanger, we have some chorus, and we have some reverb. And all of these things are adding a little bit of extra width and depth and texture and tail. And so that's gonna make it sit in that production a little bit smoother. So here is this in solo. That versus this. Mm -hmm. 
crafted as the same exact patch at the start. We've just kind of made sure that we have either altered something or picked a slightly different version of a patch that has a little bit more depth and texture. One of the things I see a lot in just poor sound selection is people picking sounds that are way too dry. And I know a dry production is a certain production style. However, I feel like a lot of people uh, will lack a lot of depth and a lot of texture in their productions because they're just picking things that are super dry and they fit kind of awkwardly together. So now that we have drums that feel a little bit bigger, they feel a little bit punchier, and we have this synth that's got a little bit of reverb and width baked into it, listen to how much more consistent this sounds. Versus this. It's the exact same arrangement, it's the exact same production, it's just picking different sounds along that process. Another thing is, once you have a solid source sound like that guitar, processing it to where it doesn't feel cheap and boring. So we heard those guitars before that were just kind of a guitar sim loaded on, kind of dry, kind of pokey, little bit of compression, but like no chorus, no reverb, no nothing. I have instead made a second guitar patch with Archetype's Quarry Wong amp, and we use this a ton in all of our tutorials. I just have some compression, a really basic setting on the amp head and the cab, and then we've got some chorus, some delay, and some washy reverb. That versus this. Because in this indie pop, alternative pop production style, I think that really benefits from having bigger sounds that might have a little bit of room or a little bit of washiness. A lot of the inspiration for this is like the 80s. And they don't use super dry kind of DI sounding guitar like that a ton, except for maybe like funk records. So it doesn't really make sense in this context either. Now, let's take a listen what this sounds like with the upgraded drum samples, the upgraded synth with some extra oscillators and post-processing, and that guitar that's got a little bit of extra width and depth and room as well. That versus this. You can immediately see how just paying attention to the sound selection will drastically change how that production sounds. And again, the guitar at first is a fine guitar tone. The synth is a good basis for a synth. These drum samples might work in certain contexts, but it's not fitting the song at hand. So I would say like when you're making your drums, make your drum pattern and then just load in several different kicks, try them out, see what works best, load in several different snares. That's a big reason that I like using the MIDI for my kick and my snare is so along the process, I can switch those samples out. I can layer those super, super easily, or you know, I can just kind of like finesse that rather than having to go through and reprogram everything or redrag in samples or use trigger. So maybe you wanna try you know, using MIDI for your drums that way later in the process, you can see if you want a different vibe. Now that we've looked at quote unquote bad sounds versus good sounds, let's take a look at how sound selection can just kind of alter the genre of the song as a whole. For this example, it's the exact same arrangement. We've just taken away that guitar just because we didn't really need it, but we've taken drums that are kind of doing the same pattern and the same synth that's doing the same pattern. But instead, I have swapped some of the sounds to be a little bit more hip hop oriented. So for the kick here, we just have Soft Kick 10. This is from our Dark Pop Volume 2 pack. It's a really nice kind of round trap esque kick. And then for the snare, we just picked the ooh snare from our hip hop pack. And these are two kind of very, very hip hop oriented drum samples. And instead of having that like little indie pop clicky percussion loop, what I did is I made a similar pattern with some trap hats. So hear how this sounds now that we've selected more hip hop oriented drums. And then we can layer that with this synth. So instead of doing those like brassy synth stabs, what I've done here is I've selected a synth pluck. And this is just kind of a sine wave pluck with like some noise running through. And we've got some post-processing. This is just a pluck called POV from our uh, serum bank called Spectrum. But I didn't really do anything extra to it. But this is a good example of how you can basically have the same exact arrangement in terms of like the drum movement, the synth layers, everything like that. But as soon as you kind of select different sounds, we're going from indie pop to now this is kind of like a hip hop-esque pop song similar to like Ariana Grande or something like that.
So make sure when you're picking your sounds, you're not just selecting sounds that might sound cool when you're flipping through the preset banks in Serum or you know Analog Lab or Anna 2 or anything like that. Make sure that you're picking sounds that have that sonic vision in mind for your record at hand. Because if you don't have that focus, I might pass this POV pluck and be like, that sounds really, really great. But if I use that instead of these you know, brassy synth stabs, even with the good drums and the upgraded guitar tone, it's still gonna sound a little bit awkward. It's way too small for those big, punchy, clicky drums, and it's too wet to kind of sit in with those wet guitars as well. Everything just sounds a little bit washy. So everything that you do in your production should have a purpose, and every single sound that you're picking should get you one step closer to kind of your final vision in your mind. So a lot of this just happens over time with trying different plugins, uh, creating different sounds that you like, listen to a lot of music and reference. So, you know, if you've got an artist that you're working with that wants something that's similar to Dua Lipa. Listen to a few Dua Lipa songs and say, okay, what kind of bass are they using? Are they using real bass? Are they using program bass? Are they using uh, analog style, like electronic drums, modern electronic drums, or acoustic drums? Are they using big synths versus small synths? All of these things can really just alter your production style, no matter how good the actual arrangement is. We're gonna take a look at one more example, and this is just an example of even how a built-up sound with bad sound selection is still not gonna really cut the mustard. We've got the same poor kick and snare and clap from before, but what we've done is we've layered some tambourine and shaker one shots, and uh, you can kind of hear that everything just sounds really programmed and clunky and awkward. It just, I like the pattern, but the actual sound itself is not great. Here's an example of how you can take a sound that's not necessarily a bad sound but doesn't fit the production and it just sounds a bit awkward. So we have a preset called Precision Roundwound in uh, Halley and Sonic and I've actually used this bass preset before. It's a pretty good, you know, kind of bass for building some kind of tone on top of but if you're not processing it and it's not what fits the vibe, it can sound awkward. So that mixed with these kind of stale, boring drums. We're getting into like really cheap, like royalty free sounding, just slap together music. It doesn't sound great. It's not super inspiring and it has no vibe. We'll take that same bad synth that we had before. And then we're going to use, again, another sound that I've used a ton just in the right context. This kind of xylophone that's pretty stock from Halion Sonic. And these 80 keys from Keyscape. And this is a good example how even if you have a premier sound library, picking the wrong sound for the actual production at hand, it's still gonna be pretty horrible. I mean, Keyscape is a super expensive plugin. I use it all the time, but we've picked kind of a drier, stabbier sounding key. And so now all of these together, None of them really fit together. Everything feels really dry, really awkward. We've got those same dry guitars and like a pretty poor guitar tone on this 1975 style lick that we're doing. And I would say right off the bat, the issue with these sound selections are again, they're too dry. They have no depth. They have no character. They're not really consistent. The drums don't match the vibe of the synths and each synth sound doesn't really match the vibe of each other. We've got like these really dry modern sounding stabs. We've got these like really, really dry low xylophones. And then we've got these really bright kind of aggressive 80s keys and none of, nothing really works together at all. And let's scroll over so I can show you this entire arrangement with some good sound selection. Once again, we have the same kick, the same snare, the same kind of loops. But instead, what we've done for this is I've taken hi-hat loops, a couple different ones. I've taken a loop from our pack. I've taken an Oliver loop. And then I've taken some shaker and tambourine loops instead of one shots because they were actually played. And now everything has a little bit more movement. It feels a little bit more lively. And this drum arrangement is a good example of how you can take electronic drums and acoustic drums and blend them together to give you something that still feels warm and inviting and like it could have been played from a real drummer, but it still has that beef and polish of something like electronic samples. We have some real hats, we have some real shakers and tambourines, we have some real claps, all of that layered over those super, super processed electronic drums from Oliver and from our disco pop pack make a really kind of unique vibe when they go together. 
And then for the bass, what we've done is I decided for this genre, in my head, I would want something that's kind of like a stabby synth bass. I don't really want an acoustic bass. I don't feel like that works really well, as you could tell from the example that we just played. And so I found this preset called Snappin' Up, and I've just played the same exact pattern. And this to me has a lot more kind of character and it fits with the drums. And then for the synths, we have those same kind of main stabs. Those sound great. But to kind of mimic that xylophone that we had earlier, I've actually taken a synth called Nervy, and this is from Echo Soundworks Pack X Keys, and it's doing the same type of thing. It's got that like xylophone marimba type stab. However, we've got some saturation going on, we've got some compression, some hyper, and it sounds so much different than something like this. You can hear how much more, you know, expensive and luxurious a sound sounds, even in solo. And a lot of the time that means it's going to blend with other things better as well. And then for the 80s keys, we're just using an E-pad that we have from our Poptopia preset bank for Serum. And it's doing the same exact thing as those 80s keys from Keyscape. However, it's a lot more wet and a lot more lush and a lot softer. It's got this kind of pad tucked underneath to add a little bit of depth versus this. Very similar, but not the same. So adding those little differences, like having a sound that's in the same style, but just picking an upgraded version or making sure that you add a little bit, bit of extra sauce can be a massive difference. And then again, for that wacky guitar, instead of having that kind of dry saturated tone from the bad example, We've got that really chorusy 1975 tone that we've talked about a ton on this channel. Pretty similar to the main, we're just driving the chorus very, very, very hard. And now with the same exact programming, the same exact tracking, the same exact arrangement, just with better sound selection, we get this. Versus this. I, I don't even think I need to speak on that. I think it's pretty apparent how big of a difference that can make just by picking sounds that work for your vision and work together. A couple tips that I wanna leave you with before we actually check out of this video are pay attention to like frequency response of samples and presets and things that you're gonna incorporate in your mix. Uh, a lot of the time I like to kind of pay attention to my arrangement and just think, okay, I've got this pad that kind of sits in lower frequencies. I've got this synth that kind of has a little bit of a buzzy kind of tinny quality. I need some drums that are gonna be punchy. Maybe I want a little bit of click to cut through the mix. Maybe I don't. Maybe I want something a little bit softer where the mix feels a little bit darker and has a little bit more um, kind of warmth to it. You just have to kind of pay attention. And a lot of this just comes with trial and error and figuring out your production style and the sounds that you really prefer. But a lot of it comes down to just having a better kind of end goal in mind rather than just throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what sticks, right? So when you're going through your productions, Try not to stay too committed to sounds because any time in the process, you could change something as simple as a kick drum or as simple as a snare drum, and it completely kind of changes the vibe of the song, shifts it into a different subgenre, makes the mix come together, ruins the mix. A lot of the time, I'm hearing issues that are not necessarily mix issues, but a mix sounds bad because the sounds themselves just don't work together. Um, you know, like nothing in this example is really mixed or post-processed between the good sounds versus the bad sounds. But I would say that that good sounds example, I could mix that in five, 10 minutes. That bad sound example, I could mix that for four hours and it's still just not gonna punch the same. It's not gonna sound the same. So make sure that you're paying attention when you're actually creating. And when you're picking your sounds, don't be afraid to audition a bunch of things. Don't be afraid to change things later down the line. Don't be afraid to um, go in and post-process things to kind of make them fit into your vibe better. You just really have to have that end goal in mind when you're creating. But I think that's gonna do it for this video. Hopefully this helped you kind of pick better sounds and sound design. Again, this is something that is so subjective. I can't tell you how to pick the best sounds for your production because you might have a different production every time and you might have a different taste than me. But what I can say is just pay a little bit of attention to the sounds that you're using, maybe kind of build up a library of drum sample banks and preset banks and scents that you like. 
So when you get to the creative process, you're not sitting there stuck and just super uninspired and trying to make, you know, 10 different samples that you have work when you could have a thousand to kind of pick and choose from. You can find sample banks now for free or super cheap. We have sample banks. Other companies have sample banks. You can get Splice. There's really no excuse for using poor sounds now because they're just so readily available. So kind of develop your tools, develop your workflow and develop your own kind of sound and texture. And then, you know, your productions will kind of just start coming together. Just pay attention to things like how different frequencies interact with each other, how width interacts with each other within a mix and how depth interacts with itself within a mix. But those are some things that I think will make a production make or break with your sound selection. So hopefully you like this video. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Once again, if you want to support the channel, you can head over to makepopmusic.com and check out all of our samples, presets, courses, freebies, podcasts, all kinds of cool stuff over there. But that's going to do it for this video. Let us know what video you want to see in the future. But I think that's going to do it for now. We'll be back next week with much more content. But until then, much love. Peace. <laughs>